What's up everybody, welcome back to Mark's RC. Thanks for stopping by the channel. So, this is what happens when you take your first 110 crawler that you ever bought, pull it off the shelf and decide to throw a new motor and ESC in the thing. As well as a radio. I got, it's running on my Fly Sky GT3 right now, which runs all my WPLs as well as this thing. So, it's nice to have one control that runs like six six crawlers. I mean, you know, I don't have a whole lot of people that I go out and run with, but I still have other radios if I, if, I, if anybody ever wanted to run anything. So, but it is nice having all of those attached to one instead of having a bunch of little little remotes kicking all over the place trying to figure out which one's which. Anyway, um, like I said, this is my first ever rock crawler that I bought. It's a, an art, uh, not I almost said RC four wheel drive. It's a Red Cat Gen Seven. I didn't know anything about the hobby at all when I first got into this. It was like right at the onset of COVID. And Amazon just kept throwing these things up in your face, you know, like oh, 200 bucks, 200 bucks. And so a complete RTR for $200 at the time had all the appeal. And like I said, I didn't know anything about these at all. Um, anyway, I got the thing and uh, was just a total idiot right when I first got it. It was geared much, much taller. Uh, and so I think it had like a 17 or a 21 tooth pinion in it. And that paired up with the 88 tooth spur gear uh, meant that the thing with the 550 motor in it, it was pretty fast. Um, and so with these original tires on it and stuff like that, the thing would do donuts and all kinds of crazy stuff. And, uh, I, you know, was just an idiot with the thing like right off the bat and was running it through mud and everything. And so it's fairly exposed inside. You've got an exposed ring and pinion, or excuse, uh, spur and pinion set up. You can see it right there. And it was definitely, you know, door deep in mud and started to rock up and trying to strip the spur out, I think, within about three or four days of me getting the thing. Anyway, Red Cat was nice enough to uh, send a new uh, spur gear out as well as a smaller uh, pinion. And so I think right now it's got like a 13 or 14 tooth, so definitely geared down a little bit, um, which has helped a lot uh, to finally turn it into a little bit more of a crawler instead of a spastic dune buggy. Um, at any rate, you know, if you ever see the Gen 7, they have kind of a strange sort of like Chevy Suburban slash Jeep slash Ford body uh, kind of all rolled into one sitting on the top. And uh, speaking of rolled, uh, that's what happened to it. I cracked the, the roof of the thing all the way down to the hood. Kind of just one shot, one and done. And uh, I was able to get it, you know, shoe-gooed back together. And, uh, but it was just ugly. And so um, one day, a couple, I don't know, well, I guess it was still two summers ago, um, like September, October, or something like that, I went to my local hobby shop and <clears throat> discovered that they had pro-line bodies. And so I picked up this 1.8 uh, 73 Super Beetle and decided to do the blue fade to black uh, paint job on it and uh, put it all together, put the roof rack on it and all that stuff. And, uh, and I ran it for a little while and there used to exist on the channel a whole bunch of videos uh, about this, but... <laughs> Truth be told, they were the least popular, uh, least watched. I think the most videos that, that any of the Red Cat Gen 7 had, uh, the, the most views was 38 or 39. There was some stuff that only had like maybe a dozen, a dozen views with no comments. And so anyway, all that stuff got deleted. And uh, this was actually a couple months ago, long before I even thought about getting this thing back up and running again. <laughs> so uh, over the winter time, kind of fast forward to within the last I guess six months or so uh, I did a project where I kind of built uh, sort of sorry I'm getting all of my words mixed up here sort of combined my MN99S um, and needed a radio and an ESC something a little bit more powerful to run the thing so I grabbed the Hexfly 40 amp ESC out of this as well as the radio and ended up setting that up inside of there. Uh, so basically took this, this one down for a little while, 
and I kind of figured that I would get it back up and running once summer came. You know, this wasn't much of a winter time runner for me, although it should be. Um, now that it's back up and running again, I'm probably going to have to reconsider all of the above. Um, but anyway, uh, upon further inspection, I found that the original motor um, had a bad front bearing in it, and so uh, I found a nice cheap combo uh 31 32 bucks or something like that for a 540 27 turn uh with a 60 amp esc and uh that stuff arrived uh last week a couple days ago and so i spent a bunch of time <coughs> getting this all ready to go and uh had a chance to get it out last night and it's running pretty well uh i do want to say that the shocks these are the factory stock gen 7 shocks and you're just an absolute miserable set of shocks and dampers whatever you want to call them um, I basically set this up low CHG now at this point I've cut about an inch of coil off of each of the shocks all the way around and um, but what happens is that this kind of suffers still from the same thing that the Panda Hobby suffered from is that it's got little orange o-rings inside of there that are very tight around the actual piston itself and it just doesn't want to let that move freely. It'll get moving if you move the shock back and forth really vigorously, um, but you get about three, four, five minutes of runtime before the thing has seized back up again. So I'm not sure, I'm sure so many people out there that ever bought their, their Red Cats and just couldn't figure out why the things, the suspension just never worked properly. Uh, it's just such a poor shock design. Um, and I've looked at trying to get that O-ring out of there too. It's kind of very generically held in there by a piece of metal which has kind of been pressed and stamped in. So it's not something that can be reversed and so I'm not in really in a position right now to go buying a big fancy set of shocks for you know a crawler that you know, cost me a couple hundred bucks so um yep look at all those nice wires inside there too it's a lexan so uh but notice the the engine compartment there that's all hand painted i mean i think i did some pretty quality work when i got this thing there's four stickers on the back there's two tail lights and then the, the pulley um, ones are stickers but everything else the yellow the blue all the detailing the silver the hose work and all that stuff that's all hand painted on thing and it took me a couple of hours to get that all done uh, with a really tiny brush and my eyesight's failing so uh, that was a challenge what else can you say about this thing um, it is a beast there's no doubt about it but it's a 1.8 body on a 110 so I think overall it measures like 19 and a half inches or something like that uh, long by 10 and a half 10 and a quarter 10 and a half 10 and three eighths called 10 and three eighths wide uh, so it's a beast it's all there um, it's not the most heavy thing but it is nicely front end weighted because it does have the battery tray uh, closer to the front towers um, I have it set up to articulate for almost five you could call it five inches I think if you got some really good compression out of the tires in the most crazy situation so five inches more to the corner um, which is a lot for this thing and I think you'll see kind of some of that coming up here but at this point I've been running for a few minutes so the shocks <laughs> they've, they've pretty much almost seized right back up at this point <clears throat> It's so annoying, um, and because you, you you basically think that based upon just looking at them, there we go, it kind of flexes out a little bit. But, um, but you would think that it, you know, that they would just work. You know, all the work that I've put into them and all the time that I've spent just uh, checking out different oils and stuff like that, um, trying to get them run low CG without the coils, uh, so they run full compressed, and that way the weight of the axle causes them to drop down and. It just nothing seems to work so uh, yeah I'm just kind of at the point where uh, I'm just holding on and I'm gonna order maybe order a set of four who knows we'll see what I do but uh, it's got some crazy capability it'll crawl over everything I can't believe I've been talking for this whole video and if you're still here and you still listen to me rambling on thanks a lot I appreciate that uh, let me know what you think in the comments about this. Let me know if you think I should continue to run this, if this needs to be more a part of uh, my, my regular routine of crawlers. This is one that I would really consider a true rock crawler. Um, it's ugly. It's a Lexan. It's noisy. Uh, I got lucky and managed to fit the TF2 rock sliders on it, which were right there, a huge help getting it around that rock you see upper left. 
Um, that was a, that was a, an un, I mean, just a completely unknown, just let's see if this will work. Wow, check it out. The whole pattern literally matches up. We are going to put these on. And I had them sitting around, so I swapped the other, the TF2 around to metal here like six months ago, almost a year ago now. Um, anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I got a bunch more footage from this thing last night. I am going to get working on it. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, you know the routine like subscribe all that stuff but most importantly thanks for watching and i will see you on the next one